Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another round of the Tamias Cup. You guys know the gist of this one. Tamias does all the work organizing everything, and we just upload it to my channel. Massive shout out to Tamias and Grimro for helping me cast, and then also our contestants in this one with Gotcha Smack, EO, God Doggos, and Moon or Destiny. Uh, massive shout out to all these creators. I'll leave their links in the description. Make sure you go show these guys some love, and let's get into it. Hi everyone, Tamias here and welcome to another Tamias Cup where we turn the PvE Memory of Chaos into the PvP game mode by pitting content creators against each other. And this time, again, we've got some familiar phases. Look at these two teams and I just want to take a moment and <laughs> draw your attention to all of these team images. Oh my god, they are way too funny. But yes, without further ado, let's take a look at uh, what our contestants can do with the new added banner and the new support Robert well take it away to the casters Grimrow as well as Vulcan all right and here we are with pick and bands I am Vulcan here with Grimrow let's jump straight into it Grim all right this MOC is a pretty lethal Vulcan we're looking out for our teams to be picking up a lot of break and also a big solution to one of the hardest bosses we've got so far Aventurine and team one is coming out of the gate banning out Jing Lu one of the best ice type DPS's against Aventurine the big threat on side two yeah, safe ban there as always. Also crippling yourself, but I think that's pretty safe. And I think we can imagine what the next ban is going to be as well. Yep, okay. Team 2 is going for that Acheron ban. Of course, Eventrine is also weak to Lightning. And Side 1 has a lot of Lightning vulnerability as well. So taking out Acheron, a very good pick. Yeah, pr pretty obvious that one. Anyone who gets that is going to be at a severe advantage in the current state, especially with a bit of investment into her. Okay, and Team 1 is first picking Ron May. Definitely a very good option, especially on side 1, for breaking through those big break bars that are absolutely needing to be broken on those dinosaurs. Yeah, safe, safe bet in any team, but especially in this one with that dinosaur, it's going to be massive. Okay, and Team 2 is picking up a powerhouse combo here of Dr. Ratio. He's also incredible on side 1, this Memory of Chaos, and Sparkle, one of the best hyper carry supports as well. Yeah, and also Sparkle having that extra advantage as well with the cycle buff, getting those extra turns, making sure that you can get the extra damage in there. Okay, and Team 1 is going to pick up Ting Yoon, kind of picking up one of those more top tier supports as well to kind of round out their roster here and we'll go straight into the next band. Okay and team two is banning away Pella here. A pretty interesting pick. What do you make of that Vulcan? Pella's an interesting one seeing as we've already had the ban of Jingliu and Akron who are both very much in need of her so I didn't think the Pella ban would be needed but still a safe ban. Okay and team one is taking away Topaz here disabling that ever popular Dr. Ratio Topaz combo there. Yeah fairly safe one there. They know the enemy team gets the next pick they don't want that topaz combining with that doctor ratio very very smart ban that one yep and next up we have a silver wolf pick here for team two an exceptional pick here to deal with those pesky dinosaurs on side one really opening up a lot more options definitely silver wolf always being one that was banned in the early rounds but still having use this far into the game Okay, and Team 1 is going ahead and picking up some defense here with Aventurine, which is a really good pickup. It's going to make them nice and safe on side 1, and also acting as a bit of a deny for that Dr. Ratio there. And also, a Luger pickup here. What do you make of that, Vulcan? What I make of that is Gotcha Smack is playing the game, and he doesn't play the game without Luca, so that pretty much sums it up there. Okay, and Team 2 is going to pick up their own sustain here in Wahua, a very offensive focused healer here, and also one of the last remaining top tier supports outside of Robin Bronya. Yeah, this team's looking pretty solid. A lot of great support going on with this one, along with that Dr. Ratio. Keen to see what damaging options they have because they are going to get another support with the Robin at the end if they want to take it. Okay, oh my goodness, Falcon Team 1 is going for a very, very crazy pick here of Yang Ching and Shu Wei. Now, Shu Wei is definitely very, very good this memory of Chaos, especially on side 1, but Yang Ching, that is a crazy pick up there. All I can say is uh, Team 1 have definitely got it sorted for the tournament. Trying to give us some entertainment with this one. I am looking forward to seeing what we get out of these two. 
Okay, and Team 2 here are picking up some very, very safe and powerful picks here in Fushuan. Nice and defensive, but also Clara, who is absolutely incredible on side 2 here against Aventurine. Yeah, honestly, this Team 2 is looking almost like the meta pick that you would almost go for on this Memory of Chaos. They're looking super solid at this stage. Okay, and Team 1 are going to round out their roster here, picking up Japard and, of course, Robert. And as we can expect, the other team also picking up Robin with their final spot. All right, here we are with Team 1. Side 1, we have Moon using the team of Tingyun, Robin, Aventurine, and Zhui. What do you make of this one, Grim? Well, it's all going to come down to Shui here and how much break she can deal and how much damage that break's going to do. But fortunately for her, she's got Ting Yun and Robin to help her out. And we've also got Aventurine to chip in a little bit of break here on this dinosaur as well. And we're going to be leading off straight with a Ting Yun ult here. And are we going to use that Shui ult straight away? Looks like we are waiting a bit, getting Robin buffs up and then going straight into Zhui. Going for the robot first before worrying about the dinosaur and that seems to be the play. Super fast breaking, like you said, with that Zhui having great potential, going straight in and breaking that robot already and getting him super low. But I think this team is just super safe. It's just gonna come down to how quick we can get this done. Absolutely, that was a crazy good play there. No slows on the team, no adds summoned here, so we're maximizing our Shui damage, and we're also not having to deal with any of those nasty slows here. And we're still in cycle zero here. Whew, this is a pretty fast clear so and, far. And we do have the Robin ult prepped as well. Whether she's going to save that one or use it straight away, we'll have to wait and see. But once again, getting that damage straight up there. Uh, looks like we are going to use that Robin ult. Fantastic, absolutely clutch. Hopefully we can clear it in this cycle after using that ult. Otherwise, it may have been a little bit of a waste. But there we go, getting them super low. And ooh, almost, can we get this done with this one? The, the robot will get the extra damage when it's his turn. So we should get it. And we do in zero cycles for the first wave. This is crazy damage here. That adventure I just hit for almost 100k there. This is basically another damage dealer here, Vulcan. My goodness. Yeah, and we're definitely having you know, no issues with sustaining this one. Those shields are just so chunky and having absolutely no issues providing that extra damage. He is a very safe play for this one. And now we're going to get Kokolia out of the way first by the looks of it with Shuei and absolutely loving this Shuei play. Fantastic seeing these four stars get some use and have some great viability. Mm, so we're gonna we're just debating whether we want to use a skill here on Tinyu, but no, we don't go for that there. But we will have a ultimate relatively soon here. So where do we think we're gonna be sending that Shui ult here, Vulcan? We'll have to wait and see. I think we probably looking at finishing off the uh, Kokolia because she does have a little bit of health. But the big issue for me is still going to be that dinosaur. We need to get that thing broken. Just tossing up what we do, holding on to the ult there for our uh, our Ting Yun. Going with the Zhui now, and yes, going for the Kokolia, trying to get her completely out of the way first. Uh, getting that break bar pretty far down. Boosting. Who are we boosting there? Okay, I thought for a second we were boosting Robin. I thought that was going to be a clutch play. We're playing it safe, going on the Zhui, and now we're going to keep raining in that damage. Absolutely here. Big damage from the MOC Blessing here. We're going to be getting a follow-up here as well. We're going to be doing some huge damage there. 120k there. And we do also have that Robin ultimate in the wings here. So the question is, are we going to be able to get this done in this cycle, or are we going to have to take one more? It's all going to come down to this Robin here. I think we might be safe on this play. I think we can get the damage in if we do manage to get that Zhui ult to deal some massive damage. So here we go. Zhui going in on the dinosaur, getting massive damage, refocusing to the Kokolia, and this should be it. Oh, Kokolia oh. down. Oh, no. Do we and have a chance? Do and she oh. does. And now we have a team two, side one. We have EO running the team of Dr. Ratio, Silverwolf, Robin, and Ho Ho. Let's get into this one, Grim. Okay, so Dr. Ratio is certainly one of the best DPSs for this side here. But the question is, is he going to be able to match up to that insane one cycle clear that we just saw from Moon here? Well, it's probably going to come down to how fast we can break that dinosaur and also how clutch we can get with our Robin ultimates. Yeah, definitely. The Robin is so huge in these ones for getting those zero cycles in. And we do have a phenomenal amount of break with both Dr. Ratio and Silverwolf in this team. Picking who we are going to go 
go with our target targets for this doctor ratio. Going for the robot first seems to be the generic play that most people are going for. And then we can go ahead and break him with Silver Wolf right here and not have to worry about him absorbing any of those enemies. And we can kill him and not have to worry about them as well. So keen to see if we are going to focus in on that dinosaur now, which would be the play. Okay, fantastic. Dinosaur getting dropped on that toughness, and we do have Robin ready to go at the end of this cycle. We've only got Dr. Ratio with one turn left, so let's see what kind of damage we can get in and if this Robin is going to come in clutch. Oh, yes. Big damage coming in there from the dinosaur. A bit unfortunate that we've got those ads still alive here, but maybe we can still deal with this in a timely manner. We did get our Silver Wolf knocked down, but we can drag her right back up here with Robin, and we have plenty of ultimates here to play with. It's just whether or not we want to use them. Well, we do want to use Dr. Ratio. Now it's going to be managing and seeing if we can get these ads down with that ultimate in play here now. Yeah, it was a tough decision that. Do you go uh, Silver Wolf before Ratio for the Death Break, or do you do ratio first so that you can get the extra proc of ratio damage on it? It was the safe play because the follow-up damage is where the big stuff happens. But we also have that Ho-Ho ultimate to get the extra energy and the extra damage. So let's see what we can put out in these last two turns. I don't think we're going to get it done this cycle, but definitely in the next cycle. Wow, that's 313 sets otherwise. What a massive, massive break that was. Okay, oh, jeez, okay, Robin coming in clutch there, allowing Huahua to last hit that dinosaur there. And we I get it done in this cycle, that was some huge damage. Okay, I did not see that one coming. That is the power of Dr. Ratio there with Robin, a truly phenomenal combo there with all those buffs active. So now we're looking at going ahead and going for Cocolia first as well, following the footsteps of Team 1 here. Now we're going to be deciding whether or not we want to go ahead and get a bit of break on the Dinosaur or on Cocolia. Now we are very low on skill points though here, Vulcan, and we're going to have to be using a heal here on Hua Hua. Okay, that puts us in an awkward situation with Ratio. Does he get enough energy out of this one? No, he doesn't. So we are in that very awkward situation now where we're going to have to almost forego this first cycle and hope we can make it up in the next one. Uh, we do have Robin with almost that ultimate ready, but I think we're not going to worry about this first cycle and we're going to aim to get it in the second cycle. Oof, getting very low here. We're going to have to heal again here is my question, Vulcan. I think... Maybe we can get by with just the ultimates and the healing from Hua Hua here, but it is a bit risky if we do go for that. Okay, yeah. going all in. Yeah, uh, luckily that ultimate did get us the heal, and that was enough to get us out of the way. Curious to see the play here. I don't think we're going to do this in a zero cycle, but I would be very impressed. But because we do have that Robin ultimate as well, I think a one cycle is looking pretty safe on this one. We are queuing up that Robin, so let's see what we can do. We've got the uh, Silver Wolf ultimate as well. Get that maximum death shred, extra break if we want to on the dinosaur. And then we can go ahead and throw a basic attack into Kakolia and basically finish her off, get her broken with the follow-up attack. Yep, I'm not seeing this getting done in zero cycles, Vulcan. We so much of the break bar left on that dinosaur here. But the question is, can Eo set himself up to get this done in one cycle to match Moon's one cycle? Yep, and this looking... Okay, he wants to break with Silver Wolf using his last skill point on that one. Uh, probably break build Silver Wolf. So uh, anticipating that Kokolia might get a massive break when she takes her turn uh, from the delay. So just trying to get those maximum stacks on the Quantum Break. And then we should be pretty good. But it looks like we're just going to go straight up with the kill. Okay, curious to see if we can still get this dinosaur done in this cycle. Because we did put a lot of investment into hitting that Kokolia. Yes, he's pretty much full life still here. We do have the MOC Blessing this round. Actually, wait, hang on a second. We are looking like we're in a bit of a danger here, Vulcan. We do have the Silver Wolf Ultimate as well. Oh, yes, that was a great play. Saving the Silver Wolf Ultimate for the Ratio Ultimate so that we can go ahead and proc the follow-up. Could we get enough damage out of this follow-up? I don't believe so, but if it is, that would be absolutely crazy. It's very, looking very close. If we can get a massive hit here. Oh, he's put it in slow-mo. He's put it in slow-mo <laughs> for us. Let's see what this is. This needs like 300k. 255. No. There's the MOC did, Blessing. Did that, wait, did the Blessing occur before the cycle? It anyway, did. It, it did. That was huge. Well played. And now we have a team one side two with Gotcha Smack running the team of Luca. Japard, Ron May, and Yang Ching. And now I will say this about Gotcha Smack. The man knows how to entertain and show us some different kind of comps. Definitely probably the most stiff team in this competition, but I am looking forward to seeing what we can do with this one. 
Absolutely. This is a team who knows what it wants to do, and that is single target Vulcan. But I think it's going to be relying pretty heavily on Break, especially with Japad here. He's got a lot of sustaining to do, especially if Event Shrine gets any of his big attacks off here. Yeah, definitely. And also using that skill straight away, trying for the freeze, didn't get the freeze, but also just getting, guaranteeing us that shield so that we can get protected. Uh, did cost an extra skill point at the start there, but it's it's kind of a must-have thing to get yourself protected at the start. Those attacks from the enemies, uh, really good placement there, giving us that extra energy. So putting Japad in the middle was a bit of an iffy one, but it did generate that extra energy at the start for our two extra allies to get them both to alt range, which is actually fantastic as well. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunately, we do have a lot of ads on the field here. They do pretty damn low from the MOC Blessing here, but those guys are going to stick around for the most part because our team is entirely single target focused. Yeah, it's just a matter of let's try and clean up these bosses and uh, and survive our way through it and keep going. Like I said, this is probably the stiffest team, but dude, we got some massive damage out of that Luka already, which is quite impressive. Yang Ching, unfortunately missing that crit on his skill, but we will get the ultimate here, so we are getting that boost. We should see some big damage. 220k with a 50k follow-up. Very respectful from that Yang Ching. Absolutely, that is big Yang Ching damage, especially considering he only has Ruan Mei on the team here. And we've got another Japan ult. This is very good management here from Gotcha Smack to keep everyone fully topped off. Yes, definitely. And like I said, those those ads actually helping his team because they're not doing any damage, but they are giving us that AOE energy regeneration. And once again, I do like the placement of Japad be between uh, Luca and Ram Mei. Maybe with uh, Yang Ching, we've got a him some extra energy, but I am liking the plays that we are seeing here. Going for a bit of a uh, interesting play, they're getting rid of one of those ads there instead of going for the robot. And it looks like we're going to still be able to maybe get this done. Oh, maybe not, actually. Only Ruan may having the turn here. So we are going to drop a cycle, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like we're trying to conserve some skill points, play it conservative, maybe even get our energy bars back up for going into the next wave so we can maximize our damage in that one. That's the kind of play I think we are going for here. Maybe he might even target a different enemy with this Luka. Yeah, just to get that energy up and keep everyone taking turns because there's no point in rushing this now. We've got the full cycle to generate all the resources we need putting that shield up so we're going to be fully stacked on the shield and then obviously i think we're going to get ourselves to just around max skill points as well for entering into this next wave hopefully we don't miss time it we got two dps here we got the cycle coming in we are good and we are pretty well poised the only other thing we could have would be the yangqing ult but we're looking pretty good for this boss Yep, absolutely here. Could be using a little bit more energy on Japad, but hopefully we do pick that up here. And we look like we might be going into a big burst window here. We've got the Rome ult, we've got a skill, and we've got Luger ultimate available as well. And potentially Yang Ching ult here. Yes, we do! Yes, that, that is a huge thing. Unfortunately, Yang Ching missing some crits there, but we are going to see some massive damage, that break bar effect on the Luka. And here comes the big break damage that we're used to with Luka. It is a 271k damage on that break, straight into the Yang Ching with this massive ultimate into 126, very respectable cycle buff. He's already down below 20%. That all happened super quick. So definitely, I think that was the play. Sacrifice a one cycle in the first wave and we are just absolutely slapping this second wave absolutely looks like gacha max whole strategy for event shrine is to not even let him play the game show so his single target doesn't even matter he's got so much break and so much damage from luka it just doesn't even seem like he's gonna get a chance to use that mechanic yeah, this is, this is a very interesting play, but we should be able to go in, roll the dice. Let's see how we go on that one. That's a five. That's an even break. That's not too bad. Let's see how we go here. Now we're going to roll in and pretty much deal the damage straight away. I think you just want to skill, hopefully get the kill with this follow-up. Oh, unfortunately, only the 10k on the follow-up. So we do have to use Luca to go ahead and get that extra damage. Still at 1%. It's just so much loaded damage in, and unfortunately that cycle buff coming in for the 1% damage. That's a little bit unfortunate. Okay, but now, Volker, we are in phase two here, and we're going to have to burst this down pretty quick, because if we don't get through those game shows uh, with the break bar, we're going to have to face them with our full single target team, and that might lead to some pretty crazy stuns on Luka and Yang Ching. I'm very interested oh, to see how it And it. fingers crossed for the follow-up there on Yang Ching, and unfortunately didn't get it, because it would have got him his ultimate and added all that extra break to this boss, but unfortunately, Yang Ching not coming through with the follow-up. So now we've got a re 
reassess what we're doing uh, with here with Luca. Getting that Ron May, stacking it up, and then I'm assuming Luca is going to go in with the ult here, but I think he's trying to gauge his break bars on who he wants to break, because ideally we do want Luca getting the break in on this boss to have that massive damage, because that's where a lot of our damage is coming from, and I'm assuming that is why he's holding on to that ultimate for the Luca. Mm, if he doesn't break this in time, it will be a little bit challenging, but fortunately, Ruan May was able to advance through with Dance 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 there, so that really put his team ahead of Event Shrine here, so he's going to be able to get the break exactly how he wants. Yep, and now we're going to have that extra bleed damage as well, which is a very important thing. Going straight into the Yangqing ult, the cycle buff doing a good chunk of damage as well. Yangqing going in with the 130k, following up with the 28k. Very, very reasonable from that Yangqing, considering we are only buffed by that Ron May. Very impressive. Oh, and getting the extra bleed damage there and the delay from Ruan May is really coming in clutch here. And <laughs> just, just, just the casual, another 148k there from Luca, doing some massive, massive damage. But I'm impressed with how safe this team has been. That is the, the most impressive thing for me. The team has been incredibly safe without anyone really losing any health. Well, that's all thanks to the Breaks Vulcan. This fight is no joke if you aren't able to break the Venture Rind here. As you can see, it looks like he's going to lose pretty much all of the game shows. I think he might be just fine, but it's definitely going to come down to quite a few stuns here. Yeah, definitely. But we do have a fair few turns left. Where's our energy bars up? Oh, dude, almost getting there on the Yang Ching. It's a matter of whether Yang Ching gets this. <laughs> oh, the cycle buff gets it done. I wasn't even paying attention to it. Just at the last moment. And there we are finishing it off with Team 2, Side 2. God Doggo's running the team of Fushwen, Clara, Sparkle, and Bronya. I must say, I do love this team composition. I am a massive Svarog fan, and seeing the hyper carry Clara makes me excited. What do you think, Grim? Well, I love this team as well. Fushwan is going to protect everyone from that nasty game show. You're basically never going to get stunned as long as you use her skill just right. And of course, we have the Machine Gun Clara build here with both Sparkle and Bronya. All the advances you'd ever want here. So she is going to be throwing out skills like nobody's business. Definitely. And I'm assuming we have E1 Clara on this one, meaning that those marks are going to stay and we can just spam skills and get max damage all the time. Absolutely here. Yeah, big damage, 116k there. Oh, going ahead and getting that blessing as well. It is just absolute carnage here. The big thing is now going to be this, the follow-up damage as well as the capabilities of just spamming those skills. And let's see what we get off this follow-up. 184, you love to see it. I, I am just a massive fan of seeing Savarog shoot laser beams at everyone. It just makes my day. So let's hope this one keeps going well. Absolutely here. Okay, so Fushwan is getting a little bit low here, but she does have her charges. The big thing we're going to have to look out for here is, are we going to be able to keep Fushwan nice and healthy going into Aventurine? Because she can actually get a little bit low here, especially if you don't have her signature light cone. Yeah, definitely with that AoE, but I think we are pretty safe. We will have Clara taking up most of the aggro, which should hopefully put us in good stead. But once again, that Clara just absolutely satisfying. Just keeps shooting those missiles. 128k on two targets is very... Very, very reasonable. And then those follow-ups are just going to be adding extra to it. Absolutely here. Oh, we don't get the cycle perfectly, but it looks like we are going to have plenty of time to set up here. So trying to maximize our skill. Whoa, okay, Fushuan, like I mentioned, is getting a bit low there. She does end up soaking a lot of damage inside two here. Yes, she is going to need that ultimate pretty quick. We do. I think we have one more basic and then we'll have a skill and that'll get her to her ultimate. Uh, it's a matter of if we can withstand the damage. These enemies shouldn't be too much of an issue. They should be focusing in on the Clara, so that damage should be absorbed pretty well. The enemy boss isn't going to get another AoE in in this time, so we should be pretty safe. And there we go. We get the follow-up uh, with 150 into the cycle buffer, 196, and we are pretty safe. This Clara skill should get it done. If not, we do have Bronya to follow it up and get another shot at it. And skill points is 100% not an issue. Holding on to that Bronya ult for this one. Hopefully this gets done and it does. Now we do have Clara with an extra follow-up. We got her ultimate ready so we are looking in pretty good stead. Ah, perfect. We do have the Fushuan signature there. Topping everyone back off. I was getting a little bit worried there for Sparkle. She was getting quite low but we do have that signature coming in clutch. So here we go. We get the first follow-up at 61. Very reasonable. Another one coming in at 19. Unfortunately, missing that crit. But we are contributing to that break. But we do have a pretty hefty break bar to go ahead and deal with here as well. Absolutely. I think we're going to be relying pretty heavily on getting tons of free energy from the game shows here to power through this Adventure Rhine health bar. So as soon as they start coming out, I think our damage is going to go way up. 
And an interesting thing there, we did run out of skill points, so Bronya did have to use the basic on that one. But just keeping in mind that Clara's skill does only do one, uh, one unit of break equal to a basic attack, even on the primary target. So it doesn't have a ton of break, so we are going to be relying heavily on that revenge as well to get the break happening. Yes, it's very fortunate that Event Shrine does mostly hit twice per action he does here, so Clara gets plenty of times to hit that follow-up there. And we're going to have another ultimate ready to go as well. Yep, here we go. So Clara getting that ult ready. Hopefully we can land these crits and don't miss out on too many crits because these are where we do get a good chunk of damage as well as break. Going straight into another skill and we do have really good uptime on this ultimate for Clara with the, the enhanced revenges due to the fact that she is getting so many turns and using so many skills. On top of that, with the aggro, she's getting hit so many times as well. Absolutely here, but we are seeing Sparkle starting to dip a little bit low here. We're only one quarter of the way here through Event Shrine, and it's only going to get harder as we get into Phase 2 here. So I think we might be coming down to the wire a little bit here if we're not careful. Yeah, and using basic attacks for now from Clara to sort of conserve those skill points by the looks of it, because we are a while away from our next ultimate on the Sparkle, so things are getting a bit tight, and it looks like we're actually going to knock him out before we even break him, or maybe simultaneously. We'll have to see. Mm, so we do have this game show here. We're going to get a bit of energy here on Fushuan. Much needed. It's going to be great. Get a bit of healing here. And we do, of course, have that Clara ultimate ready to go as well. Looks like we should be able to get him into phase two pretty quick. Yep, definitely. Are we going to basic here and conserve the skill point? Because we are still a little ways away from getting that ultimate on the sparkle. Another two turns, I'd say. Okay, are we going to use a basic here maybe on Bronya? No, we're going all in here on trying to get this event shrine done in this cycle. Okay, it looks like we do have the investment on the Bronya there because we did generate that extra skill point. So that being a very important thing. But once again, just using that basic on the Clara because once again, it offers the same amount of break. You are losing a bit of damage uh, and a little bit of energy regeneration. But the, that's the great thing with Clara. You can use her basic without sacrificing too much on the unit. Absolutely here. So we're just looking to try and get stuff done as fast as possible here. We're going to get that enhanced follow up here. Hopefully takes him out. Oh, just so close. There it is. Cleaned him up here and we're going to get another enhanced follow up here. But we're going to have to see if we can actually speed this up a little bit here because we have quite a team to beat uh, from Gacha Smack. He got things done pretty quick despite a single target team. Yes, definitely. And that is the, the one downfall with the Clara normally being played alongside another unit uh, and just relying on her follow-up. So the slowness of those follow-up attacks is what's really hurting us. Even though she does have reasonable damage on her skill, it is more of that AoE base. We don't have the cleave damage. It's raw AoE. So we do lack out on that single target potential with it. But having said that, she is a super safe unit for this boss. Absolutely, and I think as soon as we start to see some game shows coming, we'll basically be in a permanent ultimate mode here, so I'm looking forward to that, and it's coming up right after this Bronya move here. Are we going to try and prepare anything here, though? Well, yep, we're going to go for that basic here, and we do also have a big MOC blessing there. And Just also notice Fush when getting super low as well, though. She is only one skill away from getting an ult and getting that big chunky heal, but she is getting super low too. Yep, unfortunately she's going to be able to hopefully get a double ultimate off here because she's going to get the full energy after the dice if she hits the right roll. Yeah, and she should be pretty safe for that. Hopefully she can do it and queue it up straight away. Now, are we going to use the Clara ultimate here and then have another one right after? Because we did win the game show here from Aventrine. And are we use the ultimate here from Fushuan. We are definitely going to. Yep, definitely. We need to get that healing straight back up. And now it's about getting it done in this cycle. We still have 45% HP left. We're entering into the next cycle. Hopefully this is going to be the last one and we can get it completely done on this one. Mm, absolutely here. So we do have that full heal from Fushuan, so we're looking pretty good. And we've got full protection from crowd control. And we do have now basically four enhanced follow-up attacks here on Clara. Yep, just going ham on that. So we still, once again, still getting reasonable damage out of that Clara. But when we compare it to Gotcha Smack's team that just had so much hyper single target damage, uh, it is a bit lacking in the speed because of that skill being the AoE damage. But we are looking pretty safe here. And I think we will manage to get it done in this cycle because we do have the Bronya to come up as well, as well as Aventurine take his turn, which will proc our follow-ups as well. I think you're right. I think we're going to be able to get it done here. A pretty good crit there, 74k, and a boost straight up for our Clara here. I think the follow-up attack's going to have to do it here, though. Yeah, definitely. We've been, look at, we've been looking at around that 60k. No, the cycle buff gets it done in time. And what an amazing performance, again, by the contestants. And really awesome to see...
I think it's been a while since we've had a draw, and uh, yes, if I recall correctly, only our very first Mice Cup result was a draw, so uh, really, really good work, and uh, we got to see how awesome Robin can be in different teams as well, so uh, thank you guys for this wonderful, wonderful showing, and uh, thank you, the viewers and Holyoverse, for making this happen, so uh, as always, take care, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next Mice Cup.